welcome to the Keepers of the Golden Gate. Nearly said Starfinder. Yep, definitely nearly said that. Uh, welcome to the Keepers of the Golden Gate. Uh, it is session 10. It is the 8th of July 2019. I am Ryan, GM. Here are my players. I am Callum from playing a human sorcerer called Eric Rain. Hello, I am Adrian. I play the half elf druid called. Called what? You cut out at the end. Called Arius, so I think I maybe took my hand off the button too. <gasps> okay, um, Sophie, I play Kitty Kill. It's a Baxi rogue with the sniffles like no tomorrow today. <laughs> Hello, I'm Stuart. I have to reach a half elf monk. There we go. And we have no crumbar this week. Uh, well, we'll have him at the end of this week, I guess, um, for Friday's session. Well, let's. We'll wait and we'll see. We'll see if we have Scott for then. Um, so, who remembers what happened last time? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> didn't you just? Li- didn't you just time. listen? <laughs> No, I only got like an hour and twenty minutes into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, so, you know some of it then, right? Or is that just us yeah. talking crap? Um, right. Anyone? Did we leave? We got to leaving, didn't we? And uh, not yet. No, we I haven't. We're like, leaving yet. We're still in the golden citadel, aren't we? So you've arrived at the start of the last session. Yeah. Right. You were greeted by some weird. Jester get up person, like a courier. These are all given envelopes. And we're all given letters. Bulletproof that letter. We can't open. Yeah. Well, crumbar biting proof letter, at least. Yes. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you want to stand in front of someone that's got a gun, somehow in this world, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> Find some weird gnome engineer that's built himself a, a pistol or a thunder stick, and uh, I will, we'll, we'll find it. This is not Torg. <laughs> uh, Torg. Um. Besides that, you went into the Golden Citadel, you um, harassed a dwarf lady a bit. I, she harassed Wait, you a bit. It. Not all of us. Yeah, the, the, the royal you. And, uh, yeah, Eremos was present. Uh, you went and spoke to the, the high commander. Not all of us did. Again, the royal you. And then uh, Crumbar noised him up a bit. And then... Yeah, you then spent a good bit of time convincing the High Commander to uh, take Aramos into the Abyss, which went well. Then you chilled out, you had a good chat with each other a bit over a meal. Uh, and we kind of kind of faded out there, and I think the plan, from what I remember at least, was you were going to go and do some research about the Abyss first. Because remember, you have about a day to kill before you set out. And that is what I remember. If anybody else remembers more, feel free to add it in. That's what I remember. Yeah, because I think it was our goal from before we got there to find out more about the Abyss, and then (laughs) we didn't. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, there's still time for that. But we'll do the goal chat in a wee second. I just want to make sure everybody remembers what what actually happened. Uh, so anything else to add to the what people remember, in case I forgot stuff? I think that's all that happened. But um, I'm actually looking back at my notes for the session, but um, no, nope, I think that's pretty much it. Just, you met the Quartermaster, Broga. That's mostly my notes here. And uh, Eremos is allowed to go on the expedition. Then some incoherent doodling. Yeah, seems right. It must have been Crumbar's lines that I doodled. Um, but yeah, so with that catch up, what is a uh, what's the thoughts on the goals then? Oh yeah, that thing. Yeah. So at the moment, the main goal is setting out gather intel on the abyss. I mean, that feels like this is going to be achieved this session, right? Yeah. Or you can cool. change it and just refocus on something totally different. I think the fact that we're about to, well, you'd hope we're going to achieve that would mean this is a good goal to set. I mean, it's up to you guys, right? The goals are your, like, it's on you guys. But obviously, in a week or whatever it's been since we last played, you might have went, yeah, scrap that, what if we did this instead? And everyone goes, yeah, that's a great idea. You know, that's why we have a chat at the start and end about goals. Okay. 
So I'm happy with that at the moment. Everyone else? Yeah. Can we actually add one halfway through the session? Like if we need to, or no, only at the beginning? Uh, generally, start actually, and end. Matter. Yeah, it wouldn't matter anyway, it's okay. Yeah, start and end. Um, but obviously things can develop, so that's why we have that chat at the start and the end between sessions. Yeah, I'm thinking the chances of us learning about the abyss, this went pretty good. Chances of reaching the abyss also in this one, very low. Mm. That's okay, that's what I was just thinking. But mm. Yeah. I mean, I have to be vague, don't I? So. Yeah. Mostly because, A, I don't really know. Like, <laughs> you could just still decide, let's go buy magical umbrellas that take us to some random land, right? That is not going to happen, just so you know. Not. I mean, jumping into a pot or something. <laughs> Spin the hat on the ground, jump in. <laughs> yeah. uh, some various methods of travel. All valid options, by the way. I'll never rule anything out. All valid options. Um, but yeah, I think everybody happy with leaving the goal as uh, gather intel on the abyss? Aye. Yeah. yeah. Good, good, good. Aye. Cool. We'll leave that as is for now. Right, well, let's get stuck in then. I think we're going to... You said just arrived, you had settled in for the night, you said had a meal um, there. If you wanted to continue from the point of view of the meal where you are all sat around the table, we can do so. If not, what we'll do is we'll um, also, like Kitty, you were present for most of this, if that makes sense. You just were narratively excused with your quotes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we can have it where, yeah, for example, we just could fade back in in that table, seeing if you want, or we can skip to like the morning of the next day. Because remember, you have Addy to play with. So what do you just want? Where would you just like to open? Morning? Unless anybody's got anything to do over over the night? Morning's okay, I think. I don't think we need to do anything in the sneaky night. Mm. <laughs> yeah, sounds good to me as well. Yep. Eric, anything you want to do at night? Uh, sleep. Okay, makes sense, yep. Okay, nighttime shenanigans, Golden Citadel. Um, whichever. Okay, that sounds like a morning thing to me then, since everybody's voted morning. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, so we open up this morning. Um, obviously, everybody had, you know, some people double, doubled up on rooms, some people didn't. Somebody obviously shared a room with Eremos. Um, so yeah, I don't really, I think that probably Arya, probably. That'll probably yeah, be me, yeah. You probably shared a room, because Eremos obviously had to protect you. Obviously. Um, so you shared a room and with him. And you know, he probably liked the bird. So. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. That's something you might want to think about as well, is what are you going to do with Ruya? Because I can guarantee you, Ruya won't fly near the abyss. Well, I'm banking on the fact that now that I've tamed her, what's going to happen is, if I release her when I come back, I'll do my very specific whistle at her and she'll just come out of nowhere and land back on my arm that's kind of how i was hoping this would pan out yeah i mean like you could definitely like release ruya to like the area of the golden city right definitely and then it can just exist yeah. Yeah. nearby yeah. um and then yeah i don't see that being an issue and obviously the only thing would be that you would need to then come back to the golden city which i believe is the plan after the abyss to make sure you like scooped her back up. Hi. Worst case scenario, I'll make it my plan. Yeah, exactly. You know, like it my keeps me a goal. Personal, yeah. You know, goal thing. I need to go pick my bird back. Definitely. Yeah. I just don't want you taking, like, <laughs> you would probably need to literally hold Ruya and force this slightly distressed bird into the abyss because naturally it would be uncomfortable. Just wanted to put that out there. That's not really news for anyone. Yeah. Like, that's not like, oh my god, secrets. That's just... Aye. It's a bad place you wouldn't bring... Yeah, it's, it's more just it's unnatural. Skittish creature to and a bad place. Ruya is of nature, yeah. Exactly. But we'll bring a child. I go, yeah. <laughs> You'll spend it for, uh, inspiration on trying to convince the High Commander. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I was thinking about this last time as well, like the time between sessions and stuff, I was like, is there a reason to not know the High Commander's name? Is it even special in any way? No. So, yeah, I feel like he's a welcome to know the High Commander's name. He's, he's, he's just known as High Commander Gil. So, th that's G-I-L, that is, by the way. Um, so, uh, High Commander 
skill. I was thinking about it between them, it's like, is there a reason to not know that? I mean, no. Would it? Would someone at some point know that? Probably. I mean, yeah, I, I it's imagine... It's like knowing who the CEO is of your company. Yeah, you would right. probably know it. Ish. Or you could yeah. look it up, right? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So if you wanted to get your way to find it, it's not going to be a specifically difficult thing to do. Knowing it offhand, though, I did feel like knowing it offhand, under pressure in the moment, maybe not, but at the same time... I knew, mm. yeah, I knew Nutty Bill's name, but now they've sacked him and got someone else, I don't know who he <laughs> is, but yeah, for example. But. How dare you give away such secrets of our lives? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nutty Bill, how dare you? <laughs> um, but yeah, so, uh, it's morning. Who's up first? Crumb bars asleep. Oh, monks are always up early. Yeah. Yeah. What are you up to? Idea, but yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, right. Uh, personal, first of all, go and see the uh, armory lazy lady. Was a Droga? Was that her name? Broga. 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 Sorry, Broga. Mm -hmm. And ask her if she could supply me with something to help me strengthen my defence. I think that's how I spelled it. Broga. That's that's. I think so as well, but yeah. Actually, I mean, she has a character sheet, right? So I have to go just go look at it. Let's have a look. What's that? It. Uh, yep, that's it. Spot on. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> um, yeah. So you go and find a find the quartermaster. Yes, please. Yeah, and she's probably at that desk again, right? And outside the kind of corridor to the high commander's office. That's probably where she hangs out. It's probably her shift. Yeah. So I. Uh, Probably sat um, behind the desk or standing behind the desk. But I don't know. It's hard to tell. Hello, Broga. I'm off to the. Well, we're going off to the, the abyss, and I could really do with something to help strengthen my my defence. Is there anything you could do to help? And you're looking like you obviously are just wearing what, like your your standard monk robes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And probably you're probably quite live, right? Yeah. Um. So uh, she looks you up and down, and she just kind of like grunts like um, as if kind of unimpressed and she's like you're awful uh, skinny to be going into the abyss she just kind of gives you a look where it's like half waiting to see how you're going to take that I prefer wiry <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah uh, stress doesn't win every battle I'm not saying it doesn't help but it doesn't win every battle I'm quite nimble but and then she like thumps her el like her elbow down on the table and like has like her palm open to you as if ready to arm wrestle and she like see if your nimbleness can beat me. She got very Scottish very quickly by the way. Yeah, maybe not in arm wrestling. Yeah. Although I'm debating about that, but nah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and she just like as you're kind of like hesitant and be like maybe not in arm wrestling. She kind of just laughs and chuckles to herself and like puts the hand down. And she goes, "See, strength's good enough for me." And she's like, she just kind of like waves as if follow me, and she like jumps off the seat. She stays the same height, and then she walks off, um, away from the desk. She then like walks past somebody and just barks on a couple of orders at them, um, just a random person in armor, uh, basically says man the desk, as she kind of marches past them, and yeah, she takes you all the way down to like, what you know is the direction to like a big armory, essentially. Right. Yeah. Let me guess, Stu. You would like to spend that story point, would you? Yes, please. Would you? Would you yeah. Was, okay. Idea, yeah. By the way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Let's let's get that spent. Let's see. Uh, can you access your little thing? that's in your character journal thing. Uh, not on your character sheet, but in your folder. Or the Gmail thing. Right. Not in that. It's on roll twenty. It's under documents. Docs. Stu's details. Yeah. In there, are you able to edit that? You should be able to. I can, I think. Yep. Oh, I don't. I think so. No, I can edit it. Oh, I don't edit. There's an edit button. Yep. Yes. I if can. you click edit on that. Yeah. And then remove the point, the one that's in there. Right. Got you. And yeah. Then save just it. Just delete it. Don't want a zero in there. No. Nah, just. It's okay. All right. Cool. And then save Select that. Uh, good. 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 Cause that's where we track our story points in here. Uh, good, good. And then, if I actually just load up your character sheet, and then please just magically work. Ah, 
can't see something yet, but you can keep that ticked by the way. Okay. I'm just testing. <laughs> right. Good. All right. Okay. Sorted. Great. Excellent. Thank you. So, you go into the armory uh, with her, uh, and then yeah. Also, I don't know if you want to write it down somewhere in the details page, maybe in your like a, a word document in your private kind of Gmail folder, etc. Within Keepers of the Golden Gate. Uh, just what you spent that on, just so for your own personal tracking. In case you're like, wait a minute, what did I spend my original you know, story point on? Because I ain't going to remember this. Um, you, um, you're shown into this big army thing. She uh, goes up to like big golden doors and then she just kind of looks at you and looks up and down the corridor and then just like pulls out a set of keys, unlocks the door, big kachunk, pushes the doors open. They uh, don't make your stereotypical door noises because these are very nice doors that are very well looked after. They just open gracefully, and uh, she brings you in, and then you see like just you know the scene in the Matrix where it's the guns, lots of guns scene, you know, only for medieval based weaponry, you know, or fantasy weaponry, and it's just all of the stuff in here is quite unique looking though, so it's not like a rack of the ten swords that are identical. Everything's slightly different, as if it's all been individually made. Um, and she looks you up and down, and kind of like prods you in the stomach, uh, grabs you by the arms, you know, holds out your arm to the side, lets it go. Just really random, like, inspections. And then she goes up to like a case, opens up this case brings out these two really delicate kind of gold bracers and then fits them onto your wrists. And like, these should do the thing. Kind of nods at you. Mm. Also, just imagine her accent way more Nordic than I'm giving it credit because it's really Scottish because she's a dwarf and I'm really horribly biased. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. You should do fine. Uh, let's see. Should do very nice. Yeah, and we're just gonna share this piece of art for everybody else that's in the, here for the what the studio just got. Uh, it's in our Discord chat for everybody, but he just got these. They're like wine glasses. They're actually just bracers, like really like elegant bracers. Um, that's what he cashed his story point in for. There we go. And she's like, "You should keep you safe at least." And then she kind of like nudges you with her elbow. And she's like, "Well, when I'm not looking after you, winks at you." And she's like, <laughs> "She points at the door. Get out." <laughs> yeah, I'll go. <laughs> yeah. And then like, you kind of leave, and the like you go out the doors into the corridor, and then you can just see her like standing with like her hands on her hips and just looking around as if taking the room in. And then just sighing, and then walking out and closing the doors behind her and locking them, and then hiding the keys up her sleeve again. And then, yeah, like, she maybe like goes to walk away from me unless you're walking with her. I don't know. Are you gonna like what? What do you do? Do you walk with her? Or do you just stay put or go your own way or what? Ah, uh, nah. Just head back to where the others mm -hmm. are. Yeah. So. And I think as you're like walking away, but it's the other direction. Um, as you're walking away, you just hear down the corridor just abruptly shouted down the corridor she's already halfway back to her post as well and she's like if you're looking for some training come find me she just bellows that down the corridor what type of training exactly small wave yeah small wave <laughs> oh no like she's not even looking she's just shouted yeah, that like back shouted. down the corridor yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe yeah. maybe you do the small wave anyways if okay <laughs> no words <laughs> but yeah um, so yeah You've got your your new, new duds. Very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. What is what's everybody else doing? Let's see. I mean, we're all probably waking up, and you've probably all assembled outside your rooms now. Unless anyone's doing anything in private in their room. Uh oh. Yeah. That they want to broadcast. Anyone? Um, no. Are you okay? All good. Sorry, I keep forgetting I've got myself muted. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm just sort of like coming out the out the door, just rubbing my eyes, yawning, mm -hmm. sniffing. Yep, and yeah, like I think maybe 
you head out into the corridor, obviously you can see uh, Reach approaching. You've got Arya, Eric, again, Gumber's going to stay in bed for this particular adventure. Uh, or he will be there in the background regardless. Uh, and Did he glug too much? Yeah, M mighty glugs were had. It's his hockey team. <laughs> um, but yeah, and obviously Aramos is there, just kind of rubbing his eyes, like half pulling on like his clothes and tunic and fixing them into place and stuff. So, you approach Reach and you see everybody assembled, waiting, kind of just standing around awkwardly, I guess. With I'm your, against the wall. With your new bling. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, everybody's there. Mm -hmm. How about we try and find out some information then about this, uh, this place where we're going to? How about we go breakfast? Yeah, okay. It's a good start. <laughs> people talk at breakfast anyway as well. You never know, might meet some people who have been there before. Yeah, mm -hmm. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. To the mess hall! Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, cool. So yeah, you head to the mess hall. As I said, as described previously, uh, obviously Katie will remember exactly as described previously since she was there. Um, yeah, just, a gene just a generic mess hall. Um, like a big what a barracks would have, um, big kitchen area. But yeah, it's like a temple would have a tidy hole actually. But yeah. nah, mess everywhere. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly, the one place full of mess, um, yeah. the mess hole. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, yeah, like this is like probably dawn. I would say yeah. So it's probably got a good amount of traffic coming in and out of it. You know, people either coming off shift, going on shift, going into training, not training, you know, a mixed bag of people. As I said, the um, the Golden Order has, like, people of all races anyway in there, so, you know, mermaids beware. Not to be too topical. So I just find the table, settle down, um, there's probably some, some porridge-like substance over, like, a, a fire somewhere. Or people can go help themselves if need be, or there's you know an open kitchen if people want to go make something. So porridge is good enough for me. Yep. That's pretty much what I'd be used to. Yeah, I mean you're probably well used to this anyway. This is like, as I said, this is essentially your home, right? So yeah. yeah. Or at least this part is kind of more centralized. The part you're in just now. This is like more closer yeah. to like the command building. Um, yeah. but you would probably have been at the kind of the slightly separate monastery, originally, um, which is still within the Golden Citadel itself, but it's like at the far side of the Golden yeah, Citadel. Really? It almost sits a bit like the way a church would sit separately, you know. Yeah, this um, is the Soccer Hall Street version. <laughs> of <the> monastery, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what about Kitty, Arya, and Eric? What are you doing? Grabbing some porridge? Going to make something yourself? Can go steal someone else's food? Like, what's the plan? And does someone get Aramos food? I'll get him a wee bowl of porridge whilst I'm at it. Yeah. Maybe put a wee bit of sugar in it just for him. <laughs> Expensive sugars? <laughs> <laughs> what million <Sugar>. gold? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys, what else happening? Talk to me, guys, you're all quiet. Well, I don't really have any cooking skills. I imagine back where I'm from, a lot of people uh, would have had uh, serfs doing that, or servants even, sorry, just like cooking for me. Mm -hmm. So I'd just be like, kind of lost. Get to just look around and go, uh, look at Reach and go, porridge good? Always, yeah. That's the best way to start a day. <laughs> it's probably really bland, to be honest. It is probably <laughs> so bland, but yeah, you can let him discover that for himself. <laughs> and I think, like, just, uh, maybe as you were saying that, like, the camera pans to Aramos, who's sitting with the bowl, who just, like, does that wooden spoon picks up the porridge and it just lets it slop it back down. into the <laughs> the bowl and you're like, porridge good? And he's like, yep, it's good as ever. <laughs> <Lop>. <laughs> I might have a look to see if there's uh, anything else that I might mean, be easy to make. I mean, there's just like, you could go get some bread, right? There's, <sighs> there's definitely just a sandwich. Bread. Ah, you might want to invent the sandwich. I would not I call the porridge sandwich, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want soggy bread. <laughs> um, yeah, 
Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll go grab some bread. Mm -hmm. I use a soup. Do we have soup? No. No soup? Nope. Huh. Whoever was in charge of making food made porridge for breakfast, and that was it. Huh. Yep. Well, I guess uh, I just grab some bread. Yep, yep. And grab a drink at the same time so I can do wash it down. You'll probably find as well in this, like, it'll be shift rotation, so obviously everything's set so it operates 24 7, or whatever many date numbers of whatever in this world, you know, constantly operating. And obviously there'll be someone that's charged with cooking something for the shift that's about to start and finish, right? So, whatever the last shift that just ended or started, porridge was made thus and so. Porridge is here. Um, or a porridge like substance. Good enough. So yeah, so you can go get some some random like provision from said uh, kitchen, which is most likely just going to be freshly baked bread, uh, or would it have been fresh when was baked bread? And, is uh, it like fruit? Is there fruit? Yeah, there'll be fruit. Oh, I've got to sell some fruit as well. Yep. So just stuff in their like big pantry thing, you know? You're just literally yeah, reading stuff. <laughs> Yeah, just taking like an apple, like, yeah, take this apple, yeah, a bit of bread, yeah, sure. Ah, and make myself a drink. Banana bread. <laughs> um, put banana in the bread. What about Arya and Kitty? What are you doing for food? Well, obviously a bowl of porridge, hearty yep. breakfast. Mm -hmm. uh, since the there's fruit, I'm going to grab some bananas and chop them up and put them in. Yeah. Arya? I'm just gonna be having like a bit of everything and also I'd be very interested of where like I don't know like a library or something is after this just saying after I so mean, I'll probably just be eating something very quickly and then being like okay so where do we learn more about this place we're going to so pardon me you'll be like to the li sorry you're cutting out again I don't know why because I was on on the pressing on the button. No, so I was saying like I'll be eating like basically like a little bit of everything and then I'll be wanting to find where the library is because obviously we're going to this new and interesting place and Well why don't we start there then? So why don't we have know you know more about it? Why don't you ask that in character? Like we're so everybody sits back down at the table after having collected their provisions and you're just all sitting eating away. You could pipe in with that question. Sure, yeah. No, I was just, I was just like, fine posting, kind of what, like. Yeah, what but why don't you ask it as Arya though? Like, let's be first person. Sure. Yeah. Cool. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. God, I'm falling into crumb bars habits. You'll yep. be proud. <laughs> <laughs> so are we so assuming Arya I'm just Arya. guessing that we're at this like. Just long a, table, yeah, just a, does, right? yeah, just a bench table. Like, user probably left your own devices at your side, but yeah, there's definitely people coming in and out, and maybe if some people sit down, they're not exactly within like overhearing distance if you just wanted to be quiet, you know. Okay, do any of them like look like they might be, you know, the Season librarian or at least studying like somebody around with? Eh, probably not, no. Everybody's just either in armor or just like in, like their under armor, as it were. Yeah, oh, like rank and file. The other side, yeah. they, they were season sure, explorer sure. look. We would be more looking for. Mm. But actually, yeah. No one yeah. here looks like they've come in from outside. If that makes sense, though, like nobody looks no. like they've come in from like a long travel. They don't have the I've got my yeah. traveling gear on either. Yeah, but clean looking, but gr old, uh, yeah, they've all older just and grizzled up. look. Sun, uh, they've had sun and a uh, weathered look about their face. That's one second, what I'm thinking up. of. Oh, she's gone. So um, she said one second anyway. I think sure yeah, connection's she's gone. Yep, yep. There's, from the last session, I'm pretty sure that the High Commander told us that not many of the Golden Order had been with permission, so people wouldn't really be willing to tell us that out in the open, I imagine. I don't know, but as anybody here looks as though they're level ten or above. <laughs> Can I see your character sheet, mate? Um... <laughs> not, not good at all. Ah, <laughs> uh, fantastic! Right, so my question to you then, Mister Half Elf, is: yeah. 
if you're if you're looking at an elf, what level did it look like, right? So when you're saying like grizzled, obviously you're looking at humanoid people and thinking, are you old enough to have maybe been about a bit? I assume. Yes, that's yeah. exactly what I was thinking. Meaning by roll a d twenty, we'll find out. Just spot him day. Uh, whether or not NC, I presume or something like. No, no, just just literally a d twenty. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Let's have a look. Ooh, nope. dear, I've got no idea. Nah. I, um, I either people. The there. I guess it's just the current people that are in are obviously of races that you're not sure how to judge their ages. Right. Yeah. But then maybe it's just a case of you're like. You don't recognise anyone in here. You don't know how many people you'd recognise in the order anyway. But in general, yeah. these might all be new people because I mean you've been away for eight years, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. That's that. Unfortunately, you don't you don't pick up anyone. But maybe at that point, while you're having a wee look around, that's when Arya pipes in. Maybe. Insert tumbleweed. Check it. Arya, can you hear us? Type something in chat if you can hear I us. I can hear oh, you, oh, but I keep pressing on the button and it's not freaking working. Why don't you hear me? Freaking working now. <laughs> yes. Oh. Why don't you turn off I've been push doing to talk? That like four times. Why don't you just turn off push to talk and then just mute yourself when you don't want to speak, and do it opposite land. Uh, See if that works. Like what I'm doing. Yeah. You don't so hear the block noise when I we do. Do. unmute I'm myself. Do you? Myself. Blah, blah. That the, the thing. Say again, are you? So are you saying I should mute myself and then unmute myself when I do want to talk instead of using push to talk? Yeah, try that if you want. Or just okay. like... Okay, okay. I'm also just going to turn your volume because for some reason... Yeah, I was just getting annoyed there because I was like trying to say the same thing four times and I... Like, no, we could, we thought, could yeah. not hear you at all. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, so um, if I was thinking if there was somebody that recognized from the previous day, I would want to go to them and literally ask them, hey, is there a bookstore near a library? Well, again, you can ask Reach so that, this. right? I mean, Reach and Crumb oh, oh, from here. Oh, okay. So they've been to this particular... Oh, okay, that makes sense. I yeah. thought this was just a, you know, center of their so, people. So know. this is One the this center day. of their people. And it's, so it's the biggest one. Oh, and, oh, oh, okay. Yep. Okay, and I was I was here like an idiot trying to like. No, that's okay. Think of it this way: this is the Vatican. The <laughs> this is like the Vatican, you know. I trained here for years, okay. but I then went else to that other place with the doors. Sure. Yeah, I thought you were always Nexus. at that other place. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This makes a bit more sense to me now. This I thought this was like headquarters, and then everybody else has you know had their training at some of the other pioneer units sort of thing. G okay. Generally, that might happen, that but for sense. them to, for the two main characters, weirdly. Um, okay, in yeah. that case, that makes it a lot easier. I literally just like turn towards uh, uh, Reach and Crumbar and say, hey, by the way, if we were to... Well, probably not hey, she probably wouldn't say hey. But, um... Um, basically I'd be like, um, may I ask if we were to want to learn more about this place that we're going to, how will we find out more about it? Is there a library we could consult? Yeah, there's definitely a library. I don't, I was having a look around here and I don't recognize anybody here. I was hoping there might have been somebody here, uh, I might, that might have, I would have recognized might have been uh, at the abyss, but. Uh, library's probably the best idea. Other than that, or I might go and meet my friend Broga again. She's probably spoken to a few people who have come back from there. That's the only options I can think of. That's... But yeah, like reaching Crumbar, obviously we don't refer to Crumbar, but... Perhaps you could help me. So as I was saying, Reach will definitely know the way to library. To speak to her? Yeah. I've been to library, yeah. yeah. So after breakfast, we can... Yeah, go to the library, see if we can get any information there. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's always a part of ori like orienteering, as good. it were. Like, orienteering, definitely. <laughs> when you joined the Golden I was like, and here is the library. Moving on. Yeah. Um, what about anyone at the breakfast in MD actually want to convey anything else, or is everybody happy just to head to the library? Um, Aria, would you um, like some company at the library? I've read a, quite a few books in my uh, in my short time. 
<laughs> Are you slowly flexing at the table as well? <laughs> <laughs> it's more like looking up quite smugly, like no yeah, one I'm reads like book. Gaston. <laughs> <laughs> if one answer, by the way, Harry Potter doesn't count, but yeah. <laughs> no, I have read many magical books. <laughs> oh dear. Craziness. I was trying to think of a good D&D related uh, Harry Potter joke there, but nothing came to mind, sadly. Uh, what about Kitty? Was Kitty get any input to this? or? I'm pretty busy stuffing my face with food. Mm-hmm. Um, nom nom nom. I think as well, as you're like eating like, away, like Aram also just slide his bowl over to you, Kay, because you seem to not care what you're eating. So. Yeah, I've already like scooped it into mine, like, <laughs> thanks, kid. <laughs> I was thinking I'll just push the spoon a bit closer to Kit as well, by the way, you can use this. <laughs> 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 Spoons are for chumps. <laughs> Face is just straight in the bowl. <laughs> I'd suit you perfectly, then. <laughs> it's how I eat anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you. S- I mean, I say finish your food, but Kitty finishes your food, um, <laughs> and yeah, you can head off to the library. Unless you want to do anything else on the way to the library. Nothing I can think of. That's... Yeah, in that case, yeah. yeah, you can lead them to the library. You get there. Yep, big, huge library. It's more like a a warehouse, I guess, really. Um, stacked full, you know, some kind of Amazon distribution warehouse type deal, <laughs> but full of books, scrolls, various things. Mostly books and scrolls. Well, this is because I've got a real bad memory, but how long it was the next day, wasn't it? We were planning and going to the best. You basically night. have this whole day of stuff yeah. and then you're leaving. Right. Yeah. And I also, it was. Um, I think it was relatively early morning you'd arrived at the Golden Citadel. By the time you get in, settled in, met with the High Commander, I went back, it was probably like midday, settled down, had some food, chatted into evening, went to bed, did whatever you did, and then this is now the morning of the next day. You've got this day, and it was unclear if you were leaving at night or the morning. Uh, yeah, right. But we're definitely well rested and all that. We'll oh yeah, like there's no, I don't think MD lost anything with the last session. Anyway, I think you should also be max yeah. everything anyway. Yeah, I'm thinking more of just role playing rested kind of than actual. Oh yeah, he's got he's got he's got, an, he's got a night's sleep. Yeah, like. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, up to the reception desk, whatever they call it. Um, yeah, there's um. At the moment, there's only one other person here, like that you can see, because obviously this place is huge. Um, and it isn't exactly just in a straight line, um, but it's a huge, huge part of the Citadel. It's dedicated to the library. And uh, do you want to roll me a history check just now, Reach? Yeah, history. Oh, Perfect. Yes. The I know this place inside out. The, the library has been built with like a, the equivalent of an air gap as well. So you walk. Is if almost like you could technically walk around the entire library building that is within the Citadel building. Okay. So, in theory, the Citadel could burn around, like burn down around it, and it in theory might never burn the library. Okay. Yeah. So it's been designed to protect the knowledge, as well, mm-hmm. but it's open to all members of the Golden Order, obviously. Um, other people that come to visit can request to see texts, but they have to like request specific texts, go through certain channels, be escorted, blah 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 blah. There's quite a an ordeal. The knowledge is quite well protected as you can imagine. But yeah, it's huge. And there's only one person you could spot um, that seems to be like stacking scrolls on a shelf. Hello, excuse me to that person. Uh, we're looking for some help here. Yeah, and the uh, person that's around, uh, they look pretty elven, quite frankly. Um, Kind of long, kind of, I would say dirty blonde, maybe here. Um, yeah. Kind of fairly, fairly sharp cheekbones. Uh, possibly male as well. Turns round, looks, and a. Uh, I mean, you've probably been to the library a few times, so this person is called. Let me find what what I called them. They're called Dane. Uh, I'll just paste it in chat. Dane they have a last Dane. name as well, but that's, you know, it goes. Paladin Dean. And they're a lore keeper, 
so there you go. I guess I'll put that in as well. Citadel or Keeper, that's what they could be called. Citadel. I would think, yeah, that'd be their title, so I would know that anyway. Yeah, that's. I know he's a Lord, Lord Keeper. Yeah, and I think it would be respectful to say Lord Keeper as opposed to, alright, Dane, you know? Yeah. 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 Hello, Lord Keeper. Uh, we're looking for some information. That's and he kind of like smirks a little. Um, and then kind of climbs down the ladder. He's holding like maybe like a good six or seven scrolls under his arm, and as he kind of gracefully steps down, and he's he's not wearing armor as such, but he's kind of like a, the top half like a golden robe that has a big red sash that wraps all the way round into like what looks like a kind of tabard at the front. So he's quite fancily dressed, but it's what you'd imagine is under a lot of the golden plated armor. Like when you looked at Gil, he had all the red kind of cloak. At the front is a tabard, and at the back, and um, with all the armor plating over it, this looks like what would be underneath that for this guy. So he's very well dressed, um, and he kind of like goes down the, the ladders and kind of like holds the scrolls and goes, "Well, I assume that's why you're here." Exactly the best place I'm aware of for information. Um, we're going on a quest, a uh, expedition to the abyss and we just want to try and find out any information we can about it. Obviously the best prepared we are, the more chance of success we have. And then he kind of uh, he holds up a scroll like as if, you know, announcing something. And he says, precisely, preparation, second to none, and waves the scroll about absentmindedly. Now, did you bring Aramos here? Yes. We wouldn't have left the kids somewhere without it. So <laughs> that's the point. He's Who would like to me. roll perception for me? Maybe are you? Do you want to roll perception for me? Because uh, I feel like you're probably the one... Oh, this, this yeah. is going to be good. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. Yeah. Did we put him on a lead? <laughs> I've got a feeling we didn't. <laughs> well, we've lost the kid. Yeah, again. Hey. Uh, it happens. Oh, oh, he's my little shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Not the boy. Hey. Hey. No, 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 he's my little shadow. Uh, Annoying, because he's too much of a shadow. So <laughs> um, what was it, sorry? Perception, yeah. What, what do I... There we go, yep. Okay. I think, um, when you stop looking at, like, Lorekeeper... I is perceptive. When you start looking at Lorekeeper, like Valfiel, kind of waving this scroll, I think you just see the tail end of Eremos as his feet scamper behind like a like a, a shelf, like a row of shelves, and he's bolted off. So yeah, and I think um, at that point, this is where like uh, the Lorekeeper like waves all of you over to like the desk area. Um, so are you? It's up to you. Are you gonna go after Eremos, or are you gonna stick with the group? If you're speaking, we can't hear you. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do the other thing where I'm just muting myself from time to time. Um, yeah, so I think I'm just gonna assume that I've kind of become the kid's kind of caretaker and I'm just gonna take off after him and, and you know, rely on the group to, on mm -hmm. the rest to do, to do some, some research on this. So I'm just gonna go see whatever is going on with the kid. Yeah, and I think we have this shot of obviously... Uh, Dane setting all the, the scrolls down carefully on the desk and he just kind of looks up as if looking over the top of glasses he's not wearing and looks past the group and just sees like Arya run down a, the corridor of uh, bookshelves as if his eyes just track her as she disappears into the, the shelves upon shelves upon shelves or the stacks as a certain author would call them yeah yeah, and uh, yeah so <laughs> with that, I see. What <laughs> <laughs> yes, fans of uh, that book series, and um, yeah, he says, "So you wish now I join the abyss?" And that's what Dean says to the group. Yes, please. Anything would be useful. And then uh, he takes out like a tiny piece of parchment, picks up a quill, scribbles on it. Do not. Go there, and then dragons. just just hands it to you. Yeah, have, read it. And he's like, <laughs> remember. He's help. like, remember. Be careful with the materials. And uh, it's just no. It's like a, like, 
number system. You need to go find the right bookshelf. Oh, right, yeah. cool. Okay. So it's literally just like a, a ticket that says, go to this bookshelf, go to this shelf, go to this stack, blah, 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 blah. It's very organised. Yeah, okay. um, but it's all in Elven, so can you read that? <laughs> I'm sure I can. Let's find uh, out. Elvish language, yes. Yep, you're, you're, you're sorted. I would hope so, but you're, it was just yes. in case you couldn't. But he would write it in Elvish, because he's an elf. Yeah. Yep. And then he just so. kind of picks up his... Uh, you know, his scrolls, and he, he just says to the use, he's like, be careful with the materials, I, and if you need any assistance, you know where I am. And he just walks off and goes back to his ladder. Thank you. Uh, off we go, obviously I can navigate this. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's pretty simple, it's almost like, you know, 15A1, you know, like the equivalent of that, and it's just a case of 15 rows in, you know, Row A, shelf A, blah blah blah, whatever. I'm not going to design this place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, debating areas disappeared. Oh, yeah, she gone. <laughs> right. See on the back of this, right? Like, I'm away. Right, I can, <laughs> I can, I can recognize kids. this kind of. So right. So on the back of this, right, area, and then put it in common, just so she can read it and leave it on the reception. Mm -hmm. And then off I go, off we go, right? Yep. And Can I ask the um, Lord Keeper? The Lord Keeper, yeah, mm -hmm. to uh, uh, another question when they walk. When they walk off, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to I'd turn around to the Lord Keeper and say, "Do you have anything on about blue scars appearing after uh, casting magic or anything along the line? Any knowledge I could gain?" And like. He's doing that thing where he's listening to you as he's like slotting in these scrolls on the shelf, and he's like, "Yes, blue scars, magic, hmm, hmm," and just starts making some like thinking noises, almost like he's humouring you. It's up to you if you want to roll insight. If you think he is humouring you, or is he genuinely just like, "This is interesting." Uh, I'll oh. roll insight. Yeah, <laughs> I like rolls. Yeah, he um, yeah, he generally seems to be, like, you've perked up his interest a little, you know, as if, hmm, this is something I don't get asked. This isn't just what row of books, you know, is this book in? Um, so yeah, he uh, finishes putting the scrolls away a tiny bit faster when he finishes your question, and then he kind of just uh, turns on the stairs and just kind of glides back down, and uh, he kind of like flicks his uh his robe, his half robe to the side, and then says, And what are the natures of these scars? I'm not quite sure. They, uh, I believe they'd be magical in nature, because it happens whenever I seem to spend all of my magic in my body that I, c that I can... You cut out at the end again. All the magic in your um, body that... I can muster. And he kind of looks at you, and he's like, Sorcerer, as if he's like twitching his nose. I nod. He kind of slowly nods his head. He says, "This is interesting. Let's let's see." I mean, he just uh, starts marching really quickly down one of the corridors. I assume he wants me to follow him, so I start following as fast as I can. Oh yeah, like he makes almost like no indication. <laughs> Either way. Uh, give me a second guys, does MDS have the little green update ready arrow at the very top right corner of Discord? Yeah, I've got mine. Let's, <coughs> let's all do that right now, okay? Yeah. Let's all go right. do that right now. Please stand by. Yeah, I'm back. Okay, I think we're all back. I'm totally confused. I've got no. Where is? If you don't have I it, don't it, know would, it would be. All about. It would be obvious if you had no, it. On the left hand side, I don't have Top the right. thing to find the room again. Ah, how interesting. Well, you're, you're still here, so. Activity, library, nitro, friends, friends. No. I just. When I turn into your room. It's at the very, I'm very just bottom. Going somewhere weird. <laughs> I'm the wrong button. Where am I? As long as you don't click on the wrong channel, you're, you should be fine. I don't have any channels. 
So maybe just try and update. Oh, hold on. Sorry, I forgot me being stupid. Right, okay. I forgot. <laughs> I hide all that. Right, it's okay. I'm sorted again. Good, good. <laughs> uh, also, for your benefit, Arya, at the top right, if there's an update pending, it'll be a green arrow pointing down the way at the very top right of Discord. Discord. Okay, that's what I was asking. If this is supposed to I be. I mean, on we'd Discord already clicked, or... so we were already like updating, so we wouldn't have heard a thing you said. Oh, okay. Do you have that button? No, because I was, I was not, I was very confused. I was flickering in between um, Discord and um, roll twenty. Roll twenty, and I was trying to figure out where the arrow okay. was supposed to be. Do you have the button? No. That's okay. Fine. It just means there's an update waiting, and it's just I could hear some random things in everybody's lines, and I was like, hmm. Maybe there's an update for everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> my Discord senses were tingling. Uh, right, yeah, so as uh, Dane marches off, uh, his cloak kind of billows out behind him, or his robe, I should say, uh, skirt effect k kicks out behind him, and you obviously just march off behind him. And I think as you march down uh, chasing him, we see like that kind of cross section of the shelves, and we just see Arya slowly approaching Aramos. And Aramos is just like running down a corridor like with his hand on all the books like the spines of the books and stuff just kind of you know walking with like touching them all like a kid would you know but yeah you've caught up to him at least are you yeah can you not hear me anymore nope I heard that part but <laughs> So I'm chasing a kid, yep. as expected. And he's not really running anymore, he's kind of just walking fast in that way where, you know like when a kid has a stick and they'll run past like a fence and they'll rattle every single post on the fence. It's like that, but his hands are on the spines of books and he's just like making contact with all of them. Wow. Yeah, he's just happy, like, I don't know, I think like I would be in a, like, field full of bunnies or mm -hmm. whatever, I don't know. Yeah. Well, not bunnies, bunnies, because I think those I, I would consider to be food, but, like, me going to... Well, not actually, because zoos are depressing. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I know the feeling, so no, I, yeah, I, I you get know it. what, what he's, he's going through, but, like, you know, this is his happy place. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So, I'm uh, I'm chasing after him, and I'm like, hey, boss, we, we need to, to be there. Is, is there something in particular here you want to... To read, or and he just like kind of stops as if you want to look at. he stops and like turns around and goes, "We need to be there?" Question mark. Like it kind of gives you like a weird look, you know, as if. Well, we need to look into a specific thing. Here we can learn about a lot of things, but we need to find out about a specific, um, a specific part of of this world we live in. Actually, is that considered to be? This world, or yeah, that's fine. You can see this world, yeah. Okay. Um. So. Because remember, you've got the world. Which, to you've got the world, which is like the land. You've got the overworld, yeah. which is like where gods and weird super magical things live, and you've got the underworld, which is where dwarves, drow, etc., and stuff. Then. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. No, but what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like herd him back to where the others are, so that we can all. Yeah, and he's he's kind of standing like. blankly, kind of as if he doesn't really want to acknowledge what you're trying to say. And then he <laughs> says, um, "Of course." Who, he's kind of like yeah, absentmindedly looking at his hands on the books next to him, and he's like, <laughs> "Who wrote all of these?" People from all around the world, likely. Yeah, but who? I go and pick one up, and. I open it and it will undoubtedly say, you know, the name of the author. Yeah, uh, let's so find read out. it out loud. Let's see. You. I can read whatever language that's in because I'm assuming it could be in a million a variety of languages. Uh, right, okay. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pick a number between one and ten. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Guardians and Strangers. What a fucking great title to have picked <laughs> in this exact scene. <laughs> God, that's good. <laughs> Guardians and Strangers by... Let's find out. Let's let's find out. So that's uh, Guardians and Strangers. What a fucking great name. Uh, and let's... Uh, right, okay. 
Okay, so Which are you? Yeah. It is a. Uh, there you go. Bye, Shalana. Shalana. Okay. Mm. Bye, somebody called Shalana. So <laughs> that's the person who wrote this book. Who's Shalana? Um, I don't know, but sometimes it says inside of the book. So I flip through a couple more pages to see if there's something like forward or anything of the sort. Yeah, so... Or maybe to the back cover if uh, they I'm, explain who that person is a little bit. I'm just totally not going to go look at your character sheet for two seconds. Oh, okay. That's okay, give me two Shit, Am I not smart enough for that? <laughs> no, no, it's not that. It's, um, <laughs> how shocked would you be to see Druidic in this book? Ooh. Ooh. Since only you out of this group um, can read that, so... Well... Yeah, I mean, I can read it, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. But as for shock, I don't so, know. Yeah, well, maybe you don't notice it first instantly then. But you start reading it, and it's all about the Guardians of the Forest, which are oh. just rangers, right? They're the people that protect <laughs> the forest, right? And sure. it's about Shalana, who was a Guardian of the Forest, one of the earliest ones. Um, and sure. it's, it's her musings on what the etiquette is for people that enter the forest without permission or with like malicious intent you know okay so it's almost like a <laughs> do we aggressively protect the forest because the forest is meant to be welcoming and alive in nature and obviously people can walk in and out but then that invites risk so where do the limits of the guardians go when it comes oh. to strangers hmm. and Shalana okay. was a, a guardian of the forest doesn't really tell you much about her other than sure. it just says that she was one of like almost like the founding members when the guardians of the forest were uh, created sure and so I'll, yeah you know, kindred spirit of mine essentially do you want to rule nature or history either is valid yeah just a moment I think your nature might be a better one because your wisdom's probably higher than your intelligence, I think. So it's up to you if you're the base on stats. Oh, <laughs> uh, nature. I think I'm I'm the same on both. They're both off of intelligence by the looks of it. Nature and history. Really? That's a weird one. I would have thought nature would have been... Yeah. That's For okay. me, it shows that they're both on two, so... Yeah. yeah whatever. Let's have I a I know all the shit. Yeah, you definitely do. Yeah, so... <laughs> As you're like, this is I obviously. Don't waste my natural 20 yep. on this. No, but it's so good though, right? Because of how random these rolls have been to make the perfect goddamn book for you to pick, right? So, <laughs> again, Stu, I told you. Oh, I've already it just happens. Yeah. I didn't know everything about it. Totally. So, I know everything on the topic. Yeah, and like, maybe it's coming, coming back to you because I think at this point, like, you have forgot about Aramos. You're too busy reading this book now. And <laughs> you're, you're sitting, like, yeah. you're. Kids, you're what's kids? Yeah, exactly, right? You're do you're reading about Shalana, one of the first Guardians of the Forest. These are people that you've probably had dealings with, right? Not specifically Shalana, but like the Guardians of the Forest. Um, she very possibly could be hundreds, maybe like thousands of years old, you know, as well. Yeah. Because the legends of the Guardians go wha back quite a bit. Um, like the forest itself founded them. But you know what that means, obviously, as a druid from the Wildwoods. Um, and it chose certain people to step up. Uh, these people were given, like, you know, greater connections with the forest itself. Um, they were more in tune with it, and they were obviously told, you know, to be the guardians. And Shalana was one of the uh, strongest of the pack, as it were. But yeah, so yeah, you have a book on that. Okay, so yeah. basically, you know, kind of was making a, <laughs> making a bit of fun of Aramoth for being quite literally a kid in the candy store uh -huh. when I found my... Favourite you know, sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 literally. I'm, I'm, I'm standing in the middle of it with a massive bar of chocolate, essentially. Uh -huh. like, yeah. It's almost, this is... like, high on it, sort of thing. Yeah. 
Yep, this is like someone having a go at people for gambling when you've just had a winning lottery ticket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I, I think as yeah. well, like, yeah. Yeah. you realise this book is very old, yet in immaculate yeah. condition. And I mean, like, yeah. again, yeah. you could easily guess maybe it's over a thousand years old. Ooh, suddenly I feel really bad about touching it. They probably use gloves and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, again, in no way does it look delicate, if that makes sense. Oh, okay. Like, it yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. a book you could pick up and read fine, but at the same time, I think so, that, that's, honest, what, that's what the history check was for. They probably can't read it. So that was the... They, pr they probably can't. Yeah. But that's what the history check was for. It's for you realising the... Wait a minute, Shalana? Wait, that was... Ooh. She's old. Like, that was a while ago. How? When did she write this? Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, even at the end of, like, say, her time, that would have been, yeah, definitely multiple hundreds of years ago. As far as you're concerned, and you're pretty damn versed in that information, it seems, with your crit. <laughs> it's okay, though. It was a non-combat check. Of course yeah. you're probably going to crit it. So... We've ex we've established yeah. that's the rules for Arya. <laughs> Absolutely no, but that's the um, the thing. Like I, um, so I'm here with this book, being like super excited, you no know, thing, and I'm looking at it, and it's in pristine condition, even though it's so. Old. So I'm starting to wonder, if perhaps it's in pristine condition, because you know, not a lot of people here would speak critic. Mm -hmm. Also, just for everybody concerned, here was the uh, yeah, the full I list. Um, I'll give you the full list. Oh yeah, I want to see that. I will want to see that, because that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> so here was the list of the ten options that I had. Number three is interesting, just for every day. <laughs> Some damn good options in there though, so I really wasn't minding which ones it was going to be, but you picked literally the perfect one for you. <laughs> oh my god. Funnily enough, I usually go for numbers one or nine if I mm. randomly choose a number, but I don't know why I went six this time. Probably yeah. the rock music up a little. It's also the party size as well, if you include Eremos. Shoot, yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. also perfect because even just a title without <laughs> the description of it was like you protecting him, him protecting you, user strangers, dot dot dot. Very good. Very, very yeah. good. Love oh, it. so cute. Cool. Yeah, okay, <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so in the meantime, I'm like totally engrossed in this book. Yeah. Like, God knows where gone. Yeah, he, he I'm, I'm like I think at that point like up with the kid. maybe like 10 minutes, maybe, maybe 15, 15 minutes pass. Like he's yeah, so it's like 10 15 minutes pass. You look up and you go to explain. Go, yeah, Shalana was Hermos. Um oh. he's gone. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um I um I, I will put the book back. So I don't think there's any reason why I would be taking it with me. Mm, I can um, always come back. In fact, you are coming back. So exactly, and I'll I'll start looking for for the kid. Mm -hmm. And can I just check how is it a case of like the the things are like the the shelves are like from ground to ceiling. Or is there like quite a lot of space? Are the ceilings high? It's definitely a very high ceilinged uh, room. Um, again, think about like a warehouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but the shelves go up, is... but they don't touch the ceiling. Okay. Okay. And is it like a massive, massive, massive room? Mm -hmm. Okay. In that case, I, I will uh, basically ask Rhea to guide me to Eremos. Yeah. It should be on my shoulder by now. Like. I'm just using my bird as, as as much as possible. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, give me an animal handling check. We'll see how that goes. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Perfect. Uh, do you want to roll for? <laughs> do you want to bring Ruya's uh, sheet up and roll perception? Yep. I'm doing that just now because I figured it would be needed. Um, character sheet. And what was it that I need? Uh, perception. Uh, it... Am I doing something wrong? I think I'm doing something wrong here. Um, it's okay, remember Ruya has a, a character sheet. So you open the Ruya's yeah, character yeah, sheet no, up, um, and then if you click on character sheet, and it's got skills, um, perception. Passive perception but nope, above it. 
you've got the word perception plus four, click it. Red text, there you I, go. I, I be blind. That's okay, and it gets a 20 because it's got, if you, if you notice its abilities. Yeah. So, <laughs> on its abilities, can you see it's got keen sight? Mm -hmm. So that means it gets advantage on perception checks that rely on sight. And it's, yeah. it rolls twice automatically for that, as you can see in the chat box. So it, it, got, it, it, it got a 20, because of course it did, because it's you rolling a non-combat check. <laughs> So, everything. so, so far you've rolled a 19, a, t a total <laughs> of 19, a 22, a 19, and a 20. <laughs> Dear gods. <laughs> you know what's going to happen though. It's You've got fine. The second we're going to have combat, <laughs> I'm going to be running critical phase. Here's all my ones. That'll <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be fine. Um, but yeah. it's fine, I'm not... I'm not playing the, you know, the fighter character. Mm -hmm. that, that's just... <laughs> why, why do you think I was happy with falling in a bit of a more support role? Because yeah. I just know how things happen for me. <laughs> so yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> so Ruya flies off, and then you go following Ruya, uh, and we click back yeah. to the rest of you guys. <laughs> yep. So after ten, <laughs> you guys from your location probably see the random bird taking <laughs> off. <laughs> Like, what the fuck? I, well, I think what we do is we have that shot where like it zooms all the way across to where the group are coming up and like obviously reaches like 51, 52, 53 and then in the background way at the other side we have the uh, you know <laughs> random bird flying up quite a way away because I said this place is huge and uh, yeah so you just reach the shelf uh, and yeah it's got a random bunch of like tomes Scrap bits of parchment, etc., etc. So you arrive. Sophie, Eric, I should say Kitty, Eric, or a uh, Reach. Yeah, you're not here. I forget. You're off somewhere else. I'll get you in a second, Eric. <laughs> ah, yeah, good point. Uh, so yeah, we're there. So we're looking for that book that was or the section is it this the whole section uh, yeah it's an entire entire like um huge kind of row like you know, like when you walk into like a library and you've got two like a corridor just with two kind of rows on it yeah. quick look to see if it's ordered chronologically or anything like, that, like recent uh, investigations of the abyss or anything like along those lines it's definitely not organized by author because that's not a thing in this yeah. It's um, it would be like earliest accounts, up to latest accounts, or latest accounts up to earliest accounts. Uh, Do you know what I mean? It would definitely be chronological. I want to have a look at the latest accounts. See what's happened. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So uh, would you like to roll investigate for me, and we'll see how well you do. If anyone's going to help you, you can roll with advantage. And I think the only person able to help you would be, be Kitty. Kitty with it. Yeah. You're able to help me. You're literally just helping me look for books on recent investigations of the abyss. Yeah, just what was I rolling? Uh, you don't it's need okay. to roll. Like if like whoever's got the highest investigate wants to take point and right. then whoever is helping provides that person with advantage. My investigate's not bad. What's Mine's your point? <laughs> Yeah, we'll go for mine since it's pretty good actually mine, I think. Holy shit. <laughs> so you get a ten. Alright. Uh, yeah, you're still my rules. <laughs> <laughs> Just the, the luck is still in. But yeah, so you start um like you and you and Kay start pouring through recent accounts and the problem is a lot of recent accounts are just okay, we're preparing to go into the abyss. Not a lot we came back from no. the abyss. <laughs> okay. No. A lot yeah. of it's just like marked expeditions and nothing else because obviously they would need people to come back to fill out the rest. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's maybe like a lot of the stuff you're looking for is maybe in the abyss. You know? Yeah. All the notes yeah. on the go. <laughs> yeah. If it survived the conditions down there. <laughs> but yeah. This is not looking good. Mm. So yeah, mostly it's... um. Kitty pointing out, well, a lot of these start, <laughs> but I'll let her RP that part. <laughs> a lot of okay. these start, but um, 
sort of let that trail off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Start to the story. As I just flick yeah. more pages, like. Um... <laughs> but yeah. How about I help you, and you look in the the recent past then, or all well, the. Well, this is the recent stuff, so it yeah. would have to be like the earlier accounts. Yeah, yeah earlier past, uh, earlier accounts then, yeah. So I help you and you do, you roll with advantage there. That's, that's great RP there, aye. You roll, yeah. I'll roll. Yeah. With advantage. There you go. That's <laughs> better. Yeah, I knew it. My dice are against me. Even with the advantage, it didn't help. It was <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, her main roll just did that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Kitty, you start pouring through like the, the earliest accounts. Um, now, I need to go check your character sheet now to see if you can even read half of them. Uh, <laughs> let's let's see. But you can definitely find the earlier accounts. Let's see, where are we here? Is Sophie None of them start me out. <laughs> meow, meow, meow. <laughs> uh, right. Oh, you've got some pretty decent languages, to be honest. Yeah. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four. Roll a d4 for me, okay. Okay. Um. Cool. Now you remember what that was. Let's go back to your character sheet. It makes it more interesting if I just randomize it. Cool. So you find something in Elvish, right? And yeah. very, very elegant script. And it's about... Let's see the the land started to go bad right so it's a scholar like a kind of magical scholar um on behalf of the elf queen okay I, i'll get a name for this person let me just get a name just now so <laughs> one of the suggested names is chandelar and I'm like, <laughs> I'm sure there's a Sia song for this person now. That's <laughs> <laughs> literally where my mind went as well. <laughs> I kind of, like, I feel like it's too close to uh, Shalana, so we're not going to go for Chandelar, sadly, even though I love it. Uh, let's go for this person, right? So. There, there, that can be their name. That's perfect. So. Kaylin Amra, okay, that's elven women, lots of elves today, uh, elven scholar, yeah. right, so Kaylin Amra uh, was sent by the elf queen uh, to go study why the land seemed to be like turning, uh, there's no mention of like the term abyss anywhere on this document, but it just accounts there almost like a survey like as if like a, a survey of the land that this person's done um she's obviously been quite a a very engineer style minded kind of scholar and she's went and performed this kind of magic survey of the land itself and it's just that magic started to warp in the area so the natural magic that permeates kind of the world all seemed to get bent and twisted at this part of the world and then slowly became like a bit of a void here and then yeah like that's it just seems to kind of detail in a lot of kind of magic do you want to roll arcana for me okay yep um. yep a lot of the terms start to get quite jargon based you know like there's quite a lot of um shop talk used in the document but you're following it quite a bit Possibly because of your, your past. But um, there's a lot of terms that are used that are obviously only wizards and scholars and sorcerers might know. And as I said, it's pretty much the magic that binds kind of the natural order of things, if you will. That kind of latent magic energy, ley lines, etc. Ley lines break when they come close to this area now, for whatever reason. Uh, magic's going bad, things start slowly stop growing here, animals start shifting and like there's a lot of like um, birth problems etc and it, the documentation is just that the more tests they run the worse it seems to be getting so it's no. and the account lasts um, quite a number of years as well 
Um, it actually goes uh, an account of maybe about 200 years. Uh, so this person studied this for 200 years. Um, and you've got like, Aye. like you've essentially got what it seems to be like a primer page of their work, which is like an abridged letter, uh, or at least perhaps a draft of a letter uh, that was going to be sent back to the Elf Queen. That was essentially, let's not bore her with 200 years worth of documentation. Let's just tell her <laughs> the, the cliff notes, shall we? Um, and you've got a bunch of scrap paper from those notes. You just don't have a full account of it from back then because it's yeah. hard to track. But this person's obviously bound their paper in a way that has protected it throughout the years. Um, and this is pretty damn old. This is... Um, yeah, but hard to gauge for yourself, really, to work out how old this is. But given what they're talking about, it's as if there wasn't an abyss, put it that way. They don't mention, like, a yeah. giant canyon or anything like that. They just mention how the land seems to be turning against itself and going bad. And yeah. this person spent 200 years studying it, and it just seemed to get worse and worse and worse. Uh, yeah. Obviously, if you have any specific questions you want to ask me, like it isn't just about me telling you info. If you want to ask me things, I can base the answers on your rules as well. Anything you want to know? Um. And this, obviously, at this point, you can consult with your fellow players, yeah. as well. Uh. Well, guys, the uh, seems like the abyss wasn't always there. Um. Yeah. Not very um. Uh, possi possibly try find out if there was a civilization there, like if some if there was like a city or a town, okay. any prominent figures uh, from that era, like that might have been like that might have helped cause. Yeah, I can just I can answer that right now. Yeah, like in the yeah. the writings, like um, Kaelin mentions nothing about displaced civilization of any kind. It seems like. The specific area where the land went bad wasn't it didn't have people there that could be right and again you could assume if you had to sit and think about it for a while maybe the area always gave off a bad vibe and people naturally didn't settle you could assume that from what you've been reading about how bad the lands went and obviously bad juju in there might mean people don't go near it just instinctively like the way animals would avoid a bad place you know but animals didn't avoid this place because they all went bad. So you can work that out as well. Mm. Also the fact that you know magic goes a bit jank here as well. Anything else you want to know about this from like the earliest account that you've got of this place? Was there any like prominent figures there, like someone who stood out, like a shady individual they mentioned at all? If there was, Kaylin doesn't mention it in her in her works. She mostly concerns herself with like the details of the survey. Because keep in mind, this is like a kind of an abridged letter or a draft, so it's not even like the final draft of the letter. Um, was yeah. there any ley lines going across the abyss where it is now? Yeah, so like there were a whole bunch of lines that kind of circle nearby. Um, from your knowledge specifically, Kitty, you know that Horizon's built on a focal point of ley lines, mm. so a lot of them came through this way, um, and like some run from the Wildwoods all the way up through like the desert all the way to Horizon. But yeah, anything in this area seems to have broke or twisted or rerouted itself, which isn't really mm. meant to be possible. So like it's it's literally everything avoids that area. Or breaks and just stops. Yeah. So whatever those ley lines, you know, were in harmony with, they went, screw this, I'm out. <laughs> they yeah. ute themselves away from that. Yeah, and it might just be the fact that that's why things have went bad. Like, again, the birth rates of certain animals, like mutations in them as well, um, why people didn't go anywhere near this. It just fell off, right? So, mm. and ley lines breaking is a scary thing. So... Yeah. Yeah. But it's very bad. Um but yeah, that's what you get from like the earliest account as well. And uh, obviously there's no reply. <laughs> there's nothing like that. You'd have to maybe go ask the elf queen if that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. There's a place to avoid then. Okay. 
Oh, the abyss? Yeah, totally. Or yeah. the not so abyss, as this person wrote. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The abysmal place that became the abyss. Yeah. So, uh, anything else you just want to <coughs> do in this part of the. Or anything you just want to know, in fact, as well, yeah. Because keep in mind, you can do a. Let's think about it. So, history, arcana, uh, religion, and nature. There you go. You could do any one of those, each, if you want. Anything about geography? Just I know we're going to be taking there, but it'd still be nice to know how, what direction we're likely to go. Yeah, uh, most likely southwest, right? <laughs> well, yeah. uh, weirdly, see on the. A bee line. Oh. Yeah, there's a. The, m the only map there seems to be is is this map. Uh, the where you are, and uh, the where the uh, the abysses. So yeah. And by that I mean under roll twenty. Yeah. Move these back to the screen. So yeah. You know, there's obviously like expedition maps and stuff. See from the more recent ones, it's like you know, here's our plan of action, blah blah blah. Let's go, gang. And then there's nothing. <laughs> it's mostly just filed reports of expeditions, all like the paperwork that would have to have been signed off on and such. <laughs> no returns. <laughs> so with the um, ley lines being disrupted mm -hmm. or broken or yeah. whatever, the um, does is magic uh, obviously magic here is going to be affected, right? So is it in a good way, like um, it's like you feel stronger here, or do you feel like completely out of balance, like you're oh. struggling to control your well, magic? That, so that's why I said there's a there's an arca like arcana, nature, religion, and history. That's four options. They can roll one each to get more information um, within like the scope of time and also the like the resources they've got here. And I mean, from this roll would cover the entire like stack of stuff. It's what they can piece together. So it's really up to them to what they want to focus on. So again, you just can pick one each and roll. Uh, so again, Arcana, History, Religion, and uh, Nature, and I'll give you different info depending on what you roll for what what one you want to focus on. So if you I'll want Eric to obviously like hint to them, maybe you want to do Arcana. Um, yeah. You can ask them to do so, but yeah, that's what like. Can is. I know I'm rubbish, and I presume Kitty's not much better. I don't know. I mean, she just rolled her can. That's pretty good. Yeah, did, mind you, yeah. That's, that's pretty damn good. Three there. Mm -hmm. You're actually pretty good at Arcana, yeah. Mm. So that's your options: Arcana, History, Religion, and Nature. I uh, I don't really care what one you just focus on, but that would teach you a bit more about that aspect of the abyss in general, if that makes sense. So Eric, to answer your question, some didn't need to do well in an arcana check. Say again? Surely we could all go and try to find out about everything. You could, but you used to have decided to go off and do different things. Yeah. But I have given you a hint where we are. Just, you need to pull your socks up and find it. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of getting lost chasing Armos in a stack of books. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. We'll find out what happens that, because I did not expect there to be an awesome chance to lore dump some uh, like in first guardian stuff on you, which is awesome. <laughs> which is interesting. Right. Mm -hmm. I think I should do history cause just because that's the one I'm best at. But okay, you can. I'm following to Aramos. <laughs> you can always do. Um, aren't you good at religion? No. I'm pretty good at religion. Funny enough, I'm equally as good at religion as I'm history, and I was debating about religion because I'm not sure about follow up questions. Yeah, uh, it's it's up to you, but I just think that you've done kind of a generic although it test could be anyway. interesting. Hey, okay, yeah, I'll do religion because it is unusual, and also I'm curious about what religions have. have mm -hmm. and you can have, um, again, Kitty, if Kitty's willing to help, you can help each other with these roles as well if you want. Yay! Yeah. Cool. Yep. Yep. Can you help me. You look can, up some can roll with advantage in a religion. Yeah. Go for it, Stu. Oh, yes. You didn't even need it. Wow. So you're a team fifteen, right? That's <laughs> that seems to be you guys. Um, 
Yeah, so... <laughs> the Abyss. As you were raised in the monastery, okay? It's not specifically religious, um, beyond the fact that the religion is of the great old worm, right? As a monastery, yeah. yeah. That's like it's, religious like, <laughs> but it's a bit more like a... Well, that's the giant gold dragon that flies around, right? Yeah. It's not so yeah. much a we worship this unknowing thing. It's but a no belief as such. Yeah, it's over there. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, I, it's maybe more belief than faith, right? Yeah. Weirdly. Um, yeah. So, yeah, a sense of kind of no, that that is the right thing to do. So we're here because we know it's right, not because we think it's right. If that makes sense. Yeah. And um. Yeah. Like people that nobly join the police because they want to protect people, right? You know, that type of idea. Um, I don't know, I can hear all the comments now. But anyway, so... the As part of that, in the background, uh, obviously somebody gets a text. And we all hear that. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you... Sorry, did you all hear me? Yeah, Checking it's okay. No. So, Sorry, I didn't realise it was close enough. That's that. okay. We... Um, we come across a lot of mentions of there was a temple way before the uh, the canyon of the abyss appeared. So as you're looking through all these texts, uh, it was to a very old god. Uh, even like even the writings that obviously Kalin had, it would have been considered an old god then. Right, and that those writings go back to who knows when, um, and it was to the god Janus. So I'll type that in. Uh, old god Janus. There we go. And that's the god of journeys, basically. God of journeys. Right. Yep. And yeah. There was a temple there, and that's pretty much it, really. Like, you find out that was there in amongst the pile of other random nonsensical things. There's a lot of random texts about, oh, this is the prophecy, you know? Uh, but there's like 15 different versions of that, right? You've got like loads of accounts of people going, this is the end of days, or this is the beginning of the end of days, or this is the end of the beginning of days. You know, various cults yeah. over the years as well. All of it seems to have came and gone, though, right? Through the course of the abyss, or the abyssal canyon, you know. All of that came and gone. Irrelevance, you know. Nothing really came of it. So it just the prophecies, do they all... Sorry to put interject. No, carry on. Do the prophecies all mention uh, a similar thing that's going to happen, or... Are they all... Oh no, like, all of them are, like, Completely. variations, if that makes sense. The similar right. theme is the the Abyssal Canyon is obviously, like, something to go somewhere, because yeah. why would it open, right? Yeah. A god of travel decided to travel in the direction you cannot walk in. Right. Basically, but it sounds like... <laughs> I mean, very few of the cults seem to refer to the, the god, weirdly. Hmm. It's almost as if they don't really care that the god Janus's temple was here. Because, as I said, old god isn't exactly worshipped by people, really. Yeah. Especially when you've got a giant gold dragon flying around, actually validly worth worship, right? Yeah, yeah. And as I said as well, nowadays in your modern day, for this world, the wizard king isn't so keen on open worship, you know? So... Put it this way, there are no temples on Omen, put it that way. Um, and in his cities, he would never um, care if they got, like, tore down, beaten, ransacked, anything. He wouldn't care. It's like, what's that? Temples to gods? Meh. <laughs> They're not temples to me. So, yeah, he's not he's not so keen on people uh, worshipping things that can just squish him at any point because he's, you know, a man and he's like, well, that's not okay. <laughs> Omen Island in the middle. Omen's the island right now, that's the capital. Of the world yeah, yeah. for the right. the Wizard King's kingdom. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So That's yeah. <laughs> Ominous. And then um, yeah. So old god Janus seems to be got a travel, got a journeys, etc., etc. Uh, some consider him a two-faced god as well. 
but that's just like random like mistranslations over the years. Um I'm trying to think what else, really. None of the prophecies seem to really have anything because they're all like many, many years apart. Do you know what I mean? Different ones where if somebody writes a prophecy about the abyss, gets a bunch of people to follow it and then it obviously comes to nothing or they all go into the abyss and nobody ever hears from them again. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. Yep, some of them obviously like, yeah, let's go into the abyss and go to the better land. Some other people go, let's move as far away from the abyss because it's the bad land. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. nothing's really valid, I guess. You could, or you would need to choose what you believed, basically. Yeah. Have all that nonsense. Not necessarily died, they might have just gone to a better place. I mean, <laughs> literally, yeah, they could have went to the better place. Yes. <laughs> and the other people that went far away from the abyss probably didn't, you know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you get it, right? Uh, yeah. Anybody else got a religious based question they want an answer to? Because, I mean, that's a decent role. If anybody wants to chip in with a, a religion based question. Anyone? No? Uh, uh, I can't think of religion. No, same. Yep, that's fine. Uh, what about you then, Kitty? What do you want your phone? So we've done religion. We've got arcana, history, and nature. Um, go for history. Yeah, sure. Anything specific about the history you're looking to get in? Or would you have better um, questions for nature or arcana? I'm honestly not sure of either. I can't think of anything at the minute. My nose is just... Well, oh, can, well, I, can anyone ask him? Yeah, I would say go for Arcana, just because it might help Eric. But, uh, but he's kind of curious how his magic's going to twist and kill yeah. him. I guess near oh. the abyss, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and again, if, uh, again. if Reach is willing to help. Yes, very willing to help. So you've got advantage. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and I find the book. <laughs> yeah. Really do have <laughs> yeah. So it's many fifteens. Oh dear God, so many. <laughs> so many. You got to have fifteen plus five. It's it? crazy. <laughs> so yeah. Um, right. Something that uh, you find over many, many texts from the early accounts all the way up to the the most recent accounts. The one type of magic that is affected more than anything, and the first type of magic that was affected, teleportation. That went, oh. that went wrong first. Traveling. Yep. I'm not going to slow me down. I'm not going to lose lose my extra ten feet a sec, uh, ten feet a turn, am I? That's <laughs> I mean, you, is that magic? Or is that just you being a monk, right? Just being a monk, yeah. No. I mean, fast, right? if you were a high elf and you had the like the misty step, or sorry, not high elf, sorry, an elegant, sorry, and you had the misty step ability, it might affect that, right? Because that is actual magical teleportation. But yeah, it definitely seemed like the earliest account, so after... Like after and around the two hundred years of Kalin's reports, obviously other people studied it because like wait what what's this elf doing here? You know, and why is she writing back to the Queen? You know, people got curious of course. Um random other scraps of accounts and stuff just say that obviously people tried to teleport to this location or away from this location and they ended up in random places and then all of a sudden teleportation just stopped working near the abyss. So you can't just teleport here. Which is another reason why people don't just come out of the abyss, right? Because keep in mind, you get high-level magic users that obviously maybe fancy their their chances heading into the abyss to either find this new glory land or whatever, but then try and teleport out and can't. So, yeah. And all accounts say... So, starts off with, goes weird, people get sent to the wrong places, and, uh, yeah, all the way up to, it no longer works. If it was sci-fi, I would say there's a black hole, can you, a wee tiny singularity in there. Some somewhere. kind of time dilation effect! Yes, <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, who's to say what's on the other side of the abyss, right? Yeah. Mm. Well, hopefully not us. I'd rather stay this side. <laughs> I mean, you're literally about to go like, well, we're going to go jump in, so... <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it d- definitely seems like it doesn't necessarily either want things to get to it or away from it. It's not really clear what 
the purpose of that. It could be the god of travel isn't fond of travel. Right, though, <laughs> that's an interesting overlap in both your your research, right? Yes. Got it. Got the journeys. Temple is right there. Mm. Temple's gone. Mm. Travel breaks down. Yeah. It's odd. Yeah. Isn't it is it? odd, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Very odd. <laughs> it's almost like you just picked the right skills to roll. And then rolled well enough to link them. <laughs> almost. We'll get there. Uh, yeah. Let's over these thoughts. Maybe you can talk mm. as players if you want. You just always yeah. have to stay in character. When I it comes to teleporters anyway, but yeah. I don't know if you've got plans for that in the near future. But that's uh. maybe not so near future is a better plan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it. that won't affect my wind-like abilities that allow me to glide. Will it? I don't know. Is that teleporting? Yeah. I mean, no. It's more traveling. Uh, it I mean, I mean, w f all the accounts seem to just focus on teleporting so oh, it, yeah. there are no accounts that say my wind powers have went weird <laughs> did, did it work? they did say in general magic's weird here but it does seem like any account of magic went a bit weird this is the account of my teleporting not working and here's the tests I did to try and fix it and it didn't work and it never really goes back to any other problems with magic it seems like they got focused and fixed on the fact that teleporting was like one of the most useful spells but it doesn't work here Cool. At least we won't be jumped by random teleporting demons. Sure. No idea. <laughs> I mean, who's to say that isn't what happened to all the people who went in, right? We don't know. We don't know. I feel like I should know, but we don't know. So yeah. Um, that bit yet. <laughs> oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, it's not like he's a fault weird demony type people that shimmer in and out of existence before you. Eh? Yeah, not at all. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Oh. Nope. Nope. It's terrible. Uh, yeah. So use use to like spend a good while looking through this to get all this information because keep in mind it's two big rows of uh, information just on the abyss and it's random scattered accounts of uh, early stuff all the way up to late stuff so you sit and compile things and go wait a minute somebody mentioned this in this book run over get that book look at it compare notes etc notice the similarities and what you've pieced together is Temple of Janus was there it isn't there anymore there wasn't a canyon crevice type place there is now nothing seems to want to be there ley lines are dodgy magic's dodgy teleporting's a no go people don't come back. That's it. It's quite a good haul, actually, information-wise. Um, beyond that, Eric, if we uh, skip over to you. I think cool. you'll be turning into an avatar by the end of this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, over to you. Uh, you walk for maybe 20 minutes. So it's quite long walk through all these stacks and corridors and various uh, tunnels of books etc um, you know and you get to the part where I uh, don't know maybe um, roll survival there we go do that for me that's, bit, that's good we'll have that survival is interesting survival in a library it's a big library yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you look around and you realise you have no idea where you came in Wow, you jump on your motorbike, you zoom away, like... <laughs> <laughs> Back into the part where you stop and maybe like as he's like wandering through corridors and stuff and you just see like the tail end of his red cloak go past a corridor or whatever and you fall around and you look up and you're like, actually, where, where am I? Like, you have walked for a long time. Um, you look up and you don't even know what way the entrance was. You can't really see over the stacks of stuff. As I said, nothing's in, it's not like a grid or anything. Everything's arranged where there was space to be put. Um, the room isn't a giant square either. Like when you look up, you just see the ceiling over certain high shelves. You can't really get a full scope of the size of the room. Um, oh. Especially not from where you are. And uh, like, yeah, you're kind of a bit disoriented. Um, at that point, I don't mean like, oh, you're out of it, but you definitely don't know what way you would go to get back out. Um, yeah. So yeah, you have that moment to yourself, uh, and then obviously you know what way he went, so it's up to you to try and get your bearings, or you just head with him. 
I just go with him. If I ain't got a clue where I'm going, I might as well stick with the guy who got me into. Yeah, and I think um, you head round uh, the corner, and uh, or like the the shelves at least, and you just see him kind of like crouched down, like on his knee, like not on his knees, but like on his haunches, if you will, like uh, looking at the bottom shelf, and he's kind of like waving his hand very kind of precariously in front as if pointing and then uh, looking for a specific book and uh, as you get closer he, uh, he starts to pull out a book uh, that's got like a it's like a chain around it but it's not metal the chain the chain seems to be leaves all the leaves. way around it yep leaves all the way around it and he pulls that out and then he stands back up and he's like got a hand underneath it and like a hand over the top of it almost like he's kind of holding some kind of weird cake box and weirdly that's the easiest way to convey that and uh, he's holding the book in front of himself uh, and he just looks at you and then he says something now I need to check your character sheet to see if you understand them because I need to learn what languages you guys all speak off by heart that is something apparently I can never keep track of. Callum, character, Eric, character sheet. Yeah, <laughs> good, you do. I've tailored this well. Um, Funny, because in real life, people would totally not be as multilingual as our part is. I mean, you are adventurers, right? You are better than normal people. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Just the music. Stories. And um, you. <laughs> he who played a human. Yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Master Race. Yep. Master um, Race in D&D. He says something in Draconic to you. And again, I don't think you notice it's Draconic at first. You can just understand it. Um, again, depending on how aware you are of how you can speak Draconic. And he says... The mistress will guide you in Draconic, and then he hands you the book. Huh. <laughs> the mistress? Just kind of look at him like, inquisitively like, I want to know more. Do you, do you say that to like the mistress? Back like out loud or? Uh, or are you just like... I, I say it in this exact same way he said So you say it and you automatically repeat it in Draconic? Yeah, but not knowing, just like... Yeah, like automatic. Uh, someone said it and I just kind of echo it back. Mm -hmm. And then, at that point, you see his eyes flash blue. Very, very bright blue. Ooh. And then he just kind of nods. I go, my eyes do that as well. Roll insight. Yeah, his eyes are blue, though, to start with. <laughs> well, I, it's right, I know my eyes do this because I've been told when I was younger, but whether they go that blue. Yeah. Ah, nice. Yeah. yeah. So, when you say, my eyes do that, this guy has lost all respect for you instantaneously. Ah. Really? Yeah. And then he starts to walk away. And then, do you speak Elvin? Nope. Nope, <laughs> you do not understand what he says as he kind of mutters something away. Your insight <laughs> check tells you it was not polite. Yeah, some sort of like, you degenerate. Yeah, it wasn't polite. That was the best way to put it, yeah. You probably have grasped enough elven insults over the years to know it wasn't a, wasn't as poetic as elven <laughs> normally sounds. Um, but yeah, so it's almost as if um, this person had like, you know, oh, another here you go and then <laughs> you went oh, my eyes do that and he went oh dear god <laughs> child and uh, he's just kind of marched off back down the corridors oh no I'm lost oh well time to get nose deep in this book so do you not follow him back or do you take the book with you do you sit and read it where you are what do you do I'll sit and read it where I am I'll figure out how to get back later <laughs> have you yeah you have remembered you're lost haven't you uh, yeah, like I'm more. I feel like I have lost the. I've lost recognition that I'm lost because of engagement with. Yeah. Both. I love that the two people that wandered off have like found random books for themselves. Um, 
very appropriate books. Uh, right, we'll, t- we'll take a, a break here. We'll come back at a quarter past nine. I'll see everybody for part two. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.